Hello! I made a sleeveless nightgown, which I think could also be worn as a chemise, an apron or with a belt as a summer dress. You may remember my Edwardian chemise are used the same pattern which I'd found in making Edwardian costumes for women by Susan Rowland. At first I folded the fabric lengthwise, then I folded it again. I love this method because I don't have to sew the shoulder line. I match the center of the pattern to the long folded edge and the shoulder to the shorter folded edge. I wanted a long nightgown, but the fabric was too narrow to cut in one piece. It was only 80 cm 32 inches wide, so I had to do some piecing. I needed to join a triangle to each of the four sides, back and front, left and right, but I didn't cut them in advance, which might have been a wiser decision. I simply sewed the whole remaining piece of my fabric to sides and cut it to shape. Once I was done with one side, I repeated the process. To save time and energy, I used a salvage where I could. For strength, I backstitched the pieces together. I overcast the non salvage edges. I used my old meter rod to lengthen the side of the nightgown. I did this four times. I didn't bother much about matching the stripes. I cut off the sleeves. I sewed French side seams. I alternated a back stitch and two running stitches wrong sides together. I cut the allowance very short. I worked in sections because when hand stitching you agitate the fabric a lot, this cotton frayed too much, I was afraid that this short allowance would fray away before I could finish the whole seam. I turned the gown to the wrong side. I backstitched along the edge, but was careful not to catch the encased allowance. I took out the extra width of the back by backstitching them from the neckline. When determining the necessary length of this stitching line, I went for the prettiest possible look. 
If you remember my second chemise, you know I messed it up by finishing this line too low. I made a big box pleat. I clipped the allowances a bit further down. I turned the edge of the pleat. I felt the seam. I secured the top of the plate with back stitches. The result was imperfect, but I think imperfections in hand sewing are charming. Next, I straighten the bottom of the nightgown. As always, the bottom needed adjustment at the sides. After turning the hem, I slip stitched it. I hem the armholes by turning the edges twice and whip stitching them. As this was a hugely improvised project without putting much forethought into it, I ended up with an ugly problem. Without reinforcement, the side seams could have been easily torn in the underarm. I cut two oval shapes. The size was quite random, but here are the finger measurements. I turned the edge. It was rather difficult to turn, so basting was a must. I basted these little patches in the armholes to cover the ugly ends of the side seams and reinforce the area. I top stitched along the edges of the patches. I 
I didn't do this in this order, but I found it more practical to show you the steps in a logical sequence. I gathered the front neckline. Don't do what I did or rather do what I didn't and try your garment on to see from where to where you need to gather if you want your neckline to fit better than mine does. I cut a strip of fabric of random width including the salvage. I often use the salvage for decorative purposes. I basted the strip along the neckline but I didn't match the very edges. I left the allowance of the strip about half a centimeter longer. Every few stitches I made a pleat in the strip. I didn't measure the distance between two pleats, I simply eyeballed it. You must have noticed that I used the strip cut on the grain and not on the bias. I can't work with bias tape on a bias neckline, I always end up with a disastrously stretched neckline. I pressed the strip upwards from the right side. This gave a sharp edge to the pleat temporarily. Then I pressed the allowance from the wrong side. I turned the allowance of the strip under the allowance of the neckline and basted it. I whip stitched all along. Well, almost all along, I had no idea how to finish the back center. I had some at least 50 years old lace trim from my late grandparents shop. I didn't mind that it was rather yellowed with it because of its sentimental value. I stitched the lace trim along the inside of the neck. I cut the ends of the strips short but in a way that I could make a pleat. I overcast the edges together. I did it twice, once from right to left, then from left to right for extra security.
I also finished the ends of the lace trim. With a little water I made the sharp edges of the pleats disappear. I'd made the nightgown much much longer than needed. I wanted to remove the excess length by adding tucks. I drew a line for the edge of the tuck. I used my fingers to give it a sharp edge, then I also pressed it so that it was easier to handle the tuck. I made a dotted line that would help me sew in a relatively straight line. I sewed the tuck making running stitches with occasional back stitches. I started with the bottom tuck as it was the longest. I worked my way upwards so I had to sew shorter and shorter tucks. This way it was easier to keep up my motivation. I intended 10 of them, I would have needed 12 to get the required length but I only managed 9. I absolutely love my new nightgown, although it isn't practical at all as it is a rare summer night when I can wear such light garments being hypersensitive to temperatures that can't be described as extremely hot.